In a small quiet town, a woman named Lisa was determined to declutter her home. She had accumulated a few items over the years that she no longer needed or used, and she saw an opportunity to make some extra cash by selling them on Facebook Marketplace. Among her listings was a vintage record player, a cherished relic of her youth that had been gathering dust in her attic. Lisa posted an enticing description and a few photographs of the record player. She was hopeful that a music enthusiast would see the value in it and give it a new home. Her wish was soon granted when she received a message from a buyer named Mark. Mark, a seemingly pleasant and friendly individual, expressed his keen interest in the record player. He proposed a reasonable price and inquired about its condition and history. Lisa was pleased with the offer and, after a few back and forth messages, they agreed to meet at a local coffee shop to complete the transaction. On the arranged day, Lisa arrived at the coffee shop, slightly nervous but excited about the prospect of finding the record player a new owner. Mark, however, was running late, which prompted Lisa to check her watch and fidget with her phone in anticipation. When Mark finally arrived, he offered a hurried apology for his tardiness and quickly assessed the record player. He handed over the agreed-upon amount in cash, counted it in front of Lisa, and took the record player. Mark seemed polite, and Lisa didn't think much of his haste to leave. Feeling somewhat uneasy but relieved that the transaction had concluded, Lisa headed back home. It was only when she arrived and began to reflect on the encounter that she remembered Mark had mentioned giving her a thank you card. Curiosity got the better of her, and she decided to open the envelope Mark had handed her. Her heart sank as she saw the contents. Inside the envelope, Lisa found her own driver's license and a copy of her social security card. Panic surged through her as she realized the gravity of the situation. Mark had stolen her personal information. Fearing the potential consequences of identity theft, Lisa acted swiftly. She immediately reported the incident to the local police and reached out to Facebook Marketplace's support team to inform them of the situation. Authorities launched an investigation into the matter, but the identity thief, Mark, remained elusive. Over the next few weeks, Lisa experienced a harrowing nightmare of identity theft. Her bank accounts were compromised, unauthorized credit card applications were submitted in her name, and her personal information was used to open fraudulent accounts. She spent countless hours on the phone, trying to rectify the damage done to her financial and personal life. Despite the exhaustive efforts of law enforcement and her own determination to set things right, Mark remained a shadowy figure, never caught or identified. The ordeal left Lisa traumatized and forever vigilant, knowing that even the simplest transactions could lead to a life-altering nightmare. Lisa's story serves as a stark reminder that while platforms like Facebook Marketplace can be convenient for buying and selling items, it's essential to exercise caution and safeguard personal information when interacting with strangers online. Her terrifying experience demonstrates how easily someone's identity can be stolen, even through what appears to be an innocent transaction. In the suburbs of a quiet town, a man named Tom was in search of a reliable car after his old one had broken down. He came across a promising listing on Facebook Marketplace for a used but well-maintained sedan at a surprisingly low price. The seller named Alex claimed that the car was in excellent condition and had low mileage. Tom reached out to Alex, and they quickly arranged a meeting at a nearby parking lot to view the car. When he arrived at the meeting spot, the car, a sleek and seemingly brand new sedan, was parked as described. Alex was there, waiting, and he introduced himself as an affable and enthusiastic seller. Tom inspected the car thoroughly, even took it for a test drive, and was impressed with its condition. They negotiated the price, and Tom couldn't believe his luck when Alex agreed to a significantly lower price than initially listed. He happily handed over the cash, and the deal was sealed. As he was driving his new car home, Tom felt a sense of triumph at having found such a great deal. Little did he know that he was in for a nightmarish experience. The next morning, Tom walked outside, ready to show off his new purchase to his friends and family. However, the spot where the car had been parked was empty. Confusion and fear gnawed at him as he tried to comprehend what had happened. His mind raced with questions. Had the car been stolen, or was it some sort of sinister prank? 
Panicked, he reached out to Alex through Facebook Messenger, demanding answers. But there was no response. Alex's profile had disappeared, leaving no trace of the seller. Frantic, Tom reported the car as stolen to the local police, and an investigation was launched. It was then that they uncovered a disturbing truth. The car's vehicle identification number was registered as stolen, and it had been listed on the marketplace under a false identity. As the weeks went by, Tom remained in the dark about the fate of his vanished car. The experience left him feeling violated and vulnerable, a victim of a sinister plot that had ensnared him through Facebook Marketplace. The truth behind the mysterious disappearance of the car and the identity of Alex remained a chilling enigma. Karen, a collector of vintage dolls and dollhouses, was always on the lookout for unique pieces to add to her collection. One day, she stumbled upon a listing on Facebook Marketplace for a beautiful, antique dollhouse that immediately caught her eye. The dollhouse was a miniature mansion, complete with intricately detailed furniture and tiny porcelain dolls. The seller, a woman named Emily, claimed that the dollhouse had been in her family for generations and was known for its unusual history. It was rumored to be haunted by the spirits of the family's ancestors. Karen. Intrigued by the story and enamored by the exquisite craftsmanship, decided to contact Emily. They agreed to meet at Emily's house to view the dollhouse. When Karen arrived, she was welcomed by a Victorian-era mansion that exuded an eerie, antiquated charm. The dollhouse sat in the corner of a dimly lit room, its tiny windows casting long, ominous shadows. As Karen examined the dollhouse, she couldn't help but feel an inexplicable chill in the air. Emily recounted tales of strange occurrences that had taken place in her family home, attributing them to the haunted dollhouse. Despite her initial reservations, Karen decided to purchase the dollhouse and carefully transported it to her own home. Upon placing it in her collection, Karen began to notice odd phenomena. The miniature dolls within the dollhouse seemed to move on their own, changing positions overnight. Karen's cats would often hiss and growl at the dollhouse, and strange, Ghostly figures appeared in the background of photographs taken near the display. Fearing that the dollhouse was indeed cursed or haunted, Karen tried to resell it on Facebook Marketplace, warning potential buyers of the eerie occurrences that accompanied it. To her surprise, someone named Emily messaged her, expressing a strong interest in purchasing the dollhouse. The new Emily claimed to be a collector of haunted artifacts. When they met, Karen was greeted by a woman who looked just like the Emily she had met before, but with an unsettling, malevolent gleam in her eyes. The new Emily eagerly handed over the money and took the haunted dollhouse. As soon as the transaction was complete, she hurriedly left, leaving Karen with a foreboding sense of unease and a nagging question. Had she unknowingly passed on the haunted dollhouse to another unsuspecting victim? To this day, Karen remains haunted by her encounter with the mysterious, haunted dollhouse. She often wonders if the sinister spirit that inhabited the dollhouse continues to terrorize its new owner, just as it had terrorized her.